1970. It was the year of the super quarterback. President of the American Football Coaches Association is Arkansas's Frank Broyles. During the season, a coach may look at films of some 40 different teams in action, since he exchanges movies of three games with each opponent. Then, before the coaches pick the All-America team, they check the game movie evidence on the leading candidates, and they know who is best. Here, Coach Broyles is watching his All-America flanker, Chuck Dykus. Chuck Dykus is a great football player. He's one that's a dedicated youngster that works at every technique of pass receiving in practice just as if it was uh, the Texas ball game, you might say. All right, Chuck, let's go. Good release now. They're going to be knocking the devil out of him. Give a snap count and run the curl. Get him turned. Make a good fake and get him turned. Good fake. All right, that's a good one. This time, Chuck, let's give him a fake. He, you've released on him twice to where he thinks you're going to just step and go. Now give him a quick step and come back the other way. Can't let him delay you. Good fake. Good fake. All right. Next one. Do it again. One more time. All right. Run another one. Hours and hours of practice added to the tips picked up by watching game films are what make good college players rise to All-America caliber. Dykus' outstanding ability is one reason Arkansas led the nation in scoring during 1970, and the big reason why Chuck Dykus is a two-time All-America selection. Nineteen seventy was the year of the super quarterback, but on the other end of every pass was a talented receiver, like all of our All-America receiver candidates. Sometimes, it was the catch that made the play. An era Parsegian coach Notre Dame team has never finished out of the top ten. In 1970, the pass catching of Tom Gatewood helped perpetuate this Irish record. Only a junior, Gatewood drew tough coverage. Often double and triple teamed. But he and quarterback Joe Theismann learned how to beat the stacked defenses. And Theismann knows what makes Skatewood great. He's got uh, an uncanny ability to get into the open. If I have to scramble or if I get in trouble or he feels himself covered, he uh, has a tendency just to move away from people and uh, puts his hands up and lets me know where he is. He makes me what I am. Uh, he's just a great ball player and he's a, a fantastic individual. An academic All-America, Tom Gatewood relies on quickness rather than speed. Michigan State's Duffy Darley says, we tried to stop Gatewood every way possible, but he somehow found a way to get open. When it was needed, Gatewood could break a tackle and get over the goal line. Extra effort helped make Tom Gatewood one of the country's most feared receivers and help Notre Dame to national honors. The 
Air Force Academy's Ernie Jennings joins Dykus and Gatewood as All-America receivers. A senior from Kansas City, Jennings caught more touchdown passes than any other receiver in the country. His speed, deceptive moves, and sure hands are the reason Coach Ben Martin calls Ernie Jennings the Flying Falcon. The job of stopping college football's point parade belongs to another select group of All-America men. University of Texas, Coach Darrell Royal could depend on his big defensive end, Bill Atessis, number 77, to help keep the opposing quarterback off balance. At 6'3", 245, the Big A often tackles both ball carrier and blocker, making Bill Atessis the man mountain of the Longhorn defense. Size, plus strength and quickness are what coaches look for in good defensive linemen. When they find it, enemy quarterbacks are in for a long afternoon. Southern Cal's Charlie Weaver, number 84, put it all together size, strength, and quickness, and earned a spot as an All-America defensive end. At Georgia Tech, they call this man the Rock. He's Rock Perdoni, defensive tackle, and he loves to separate the ball from the ball carrier. Another look shows Perdoni's arm knocking the pigskin loose from number 22. One of many clutch plays made by the Yellow Jackets' Rock Perdoni. <laughs> Teaming with Perdoni at a defensive tackle slot is Jim Stillwagon from Mount Vernon, Ohio, a two-time All-America at Ohio State. Stillwagon has the ability to read a play, the quickness to get to the ball, and the strength to take care of the situation when he gets there. Battling Buckeyes are once again the Big Ten champs with a key role played by Jim Stillwagon. The second line of defense, the All-America linebackers. One of the best is Penn State's Jack Ham, who knows the tricks of his trade. Over the games, I figured some of the quarterbacks like the eye fake, try to fake with their eyes one way or another, while the more inexperienced ones don't. It's uh, sometimes easy to pick up through the quarterback. Where he's looking is usually where he's going to throw the ball first. For three years, Ham was a bulwark of the Penn State defense. At 6'2", 220 pounds, he has the quickness to catch a runner and the strength to meet a play head on. He's a great one, says coach Joe Paterno. He's a very, very quick pack. We timed all our boys in the electrically in a 10-yard dash and he's the fastest man on our team in 10 yards. So he's got a quick burst to, to start with and he's he, he's strong, he's tough, he's dedicated, smart. He's got everything you're looking for in a great football player, and he is a great football player. 
Marty Huff, number 70, is an equally talented linebacker. A lot of ball carriers have felt the jolt of a tackle by Michigan's All-America, Marty Huff. Out of the Ivy League comes the smallest of our linebackers, Dartmouth's 185-pound Murray Bowden. He could hit with the best of them and has the agility a linebacker needs to drop back and pick off enemy passes. Dartmouth won the Lambert Trophy with an undefeated season. A big reason, Little Murray Bowden. Rounding out the All-America linebackers, number 45, LSU's Mike Anderson. Now, to watch a two-time All-America in action, we visit Ohio State's homecoming celebration. Woody Hayes goes to work to devise a defensive game plan, he knows he can build it around one of the best players in America. Jack Tatum arrived at Ohio State as an all-state New Jersey high school fullback. But Woody found a new spot on defense for Tatum. We had a lot of good football players the year he was to be a sophomore. And uh, we feel at that corner position to the open side, you have to play a great athlete there. And we regarded him as perhaps the best athlete of all. But he has great quickness and great speed and uh, great strength. He has the ability to hit. When he makes a little mistake, he recovers pretty fast. Tatum, a senior from Passaic, New Jersey, says he agreed to change from offense to defense because he loves to hit. A rival coach says, if you catch a pass in his zone, you're going to get hurt. Tatum says coach Woody Hayes has the skills to play any position on the team. In the three years that Jack Tatum has led the Ohio State defense, the Buckeyes have lost just one regular season game. Jack Tatum, All-America and All-Football player. When you're in the defensive secondary, you're right out in the open, where the fans can see the mistakes and all the great plays. Make the key interception or the game-saving tackle, consistently like Auburn's Larry Willingham, and you become an All-America defensive back. Tom Casanova, number 37, played for LSU and there was no finer defense in college ball in 1970. South Carolina coach Paul Dietzel is proud of Dick Harris for many reasons. At 5'11", Harris can still cover the bigger receivers who go for the end zone. And as the Atlantic Coast Conference 440-yard track champion, he has the speed to go all the way on kickoff and punt returns. Harris's play is typical of a modern defense. They put points on the scoreboard. The heart 
heart of the offense is the man who carries the ball. What makes him go? You, you get the ball and you have the crowds cheering for you and you really want to go. You, you have that determination. You get this ego feeling, you know, to really burst out. Southern Cal's Clarence Davis was one of the best runners in 1970. Alabama had its Johnny Musso, who broke the Tide's single-season ground-gaining record. The man who made the Michigan running attack go for the last two years was Billy Taylor. Joe Orduna was the key to Big 8 champion Nebraska's ground game. And Ohio State's John Brockington established a new single season rushing record at a school noted for its fine running backs. From all these outstanding runners who performed so well in 1970, the coaches selected Don McCauley of North Carolina at halfback. McCauley gained over a thousand yards on the ground for two straight years. McCauley runs, catches passes, punts, returns kicks. He does it all. He reminds Carolina fans of Charlie Choo Choo Justice on the left who was named to the same All-America team 22 years ago. Charlie's running records have finally been topped. In fact, Don McCauley has run for more yards in a single season than any other college football player in history. McCauley's All-America running mate, fullback Steve Worcester, starred for Texas, a team that led the nation in rushing for two consecutive years. Steve's running and blocking powered the Longhorns' wishbone tee attack. To Worcester, the best preparation for tomorrow is playing football today. It really gives you a full example of life. In other words, you experience all the hardships and all the troubles and all the breaks and, you know, the bad breaks and good breaks and... If it's life, I mean, it's the only game you can be knocked down, kicked in the teeth, bit, and you know, and, and you have to fight back, you know, and if you can fight back and win, I mean, that's a, that's a true, you can be a true champion in this way. Worcester scored more touchdowns and more points than any back in Texas history. Coach Darrell Royal knows he has a true All-America. Everyone in this section of the country knows that Steve Wooster is a tremendous football player. He has a burning desire to excel, and let me say that he has something to excel with. He has strength, he has size, he has the quickness, he has the ability to cut and find the soft spots in the defense. He's one of those rare individuals that not only has ability, but has the desire to go with it. Steve Worcester and Don McCauley, typical of the All-America backs who make college football a Saturday afternoon happening. for the runners are our All-America offensive linemen. Dan Deardorff, number 72, University of Michigan. Deardorff from Canton, Ohio, weighs in at 240 pounds, the best blocker in a Big Ten. Pairing with Deardorff at offensive tackle is All-America Bobby Wunsch of Texas. At offensive guard is Nebraska's Bob Newton, number 74. 
His coach, Bob Devaney, says he's so rough, our other linemen don't like to warm up against him. Our other guard on offense is Notre Dame's Larry DiNardo, number 56, typical of a modern lineman who takes pride in his work. I like to block uh, down at the goal line, maybe from the two or three yard line. Defensive linemen head up me and the play's been called to my side and just block as hard as I can and see that back cross that goal line. Comparatively small, Donardo enjoys going up against his bigger opponents. Big, tall defensive linemen sometimes have a tendency to stand up, give you a good shot at them. What motivates these great offensive linemen, like Donardo? What makes them willing to spend years to perfect their technique? What is their reward? We have our own sort of glory, I think, the offensive line. We appreciate what, what we do, and the backs appreciate what we do, and the coaches appreciate what we do. And this means more to us than, than any feelings that the, the public might have about us. Anchoring the offensive line at center is another holdover All-America, Tennessee's Chip Kell, a rugged 240-pounder from Decatur, Georgia. With field goals playing an increasingly important role in winning games, the coaches added kicking specialist Bill McClard of Arkansas to the offensive lineup. McClard set a new NCAA record with a 60-yarder against SMU. Quarterbacks are a rugged lot, and they have to be. They must be able to throw that ball and hit a moving target a country mile away. They must also be able to run like a halfback and take the pounding like a fullback. Above all, they have to think and be leaders. One of the best was Chuck Hickson of SMU. Over three years, Hickson completed more passes than any other college quarterback in history. Rex Kern, rated the best of the running quarterbacks, led Ohio State to a national championship and two Rose Bowls. Junior Pat Sullivan of Auburn had a great year, as did Washington sophomore Sonny Sixkiller. Mississippi's Archie Manning was a leading All-America candidate until he was sidelined in mid-season by a broken arm. When he was playing, Manning brought the fans to life with his rambling, scrambling style. He was all over the field. has become something of a folk hero in the South, and an Archie Manning record even became a bestseller. When the buttons came out and the records and so forth, well, they would write me for records and buttons. Of course, I didn't have any. Uh, one wrote last year uh, and was telling me how sorry he was that I didn't win the highest man trophy, H-I-G-H-E-S-T. 
so it's it's been several like that. And I think uh, I enjoy. I try to try to be nice to the kids. Sometimes your patience runs a little short with them, but uh, the male has been quite humorous. Another one of the nation's best was Joe Theismann of Notre Dame. Like Manning, Theismann specialized in getting out of tight situations. And getting his pass away. Passing is just a great, it's a skill. It's an art you've developed and then you and your receiver can do alone. I feel that uh, we can go out and win, and I really don't fear anybody. Uh, I respect all ball players that we're playing against, and even though I'm not physically in stature as big as a lot of men, uh, I don't fear anybody. I'll respect them all. Joe Theismann passed and ran so well, he set a Notre Dame record for a total offense. After comparing all these outstanding candidates, the coaches finally chose as their All-America quarterback the Matt College Football's all-time total offense record. Jim Plunkett of Stanford. A 6'3", 200-pounder, Plunkett is the classic drop-back passer. He's tall enough to throw over rushing linemen, big enough to take the punishment that often comes after releasing the ball. The 1970 Heisman Trophy winner, he fired 52 touchdown passes in his three-year career. Plunkett also passed for over 7,000 yards, an all-time college record. In the year of the super quarterback, Jim Plunkett tops them all. You have just seen the 1970 Coaches All-America lineup, a team composed of outstanding scholar athletes, people who are winners both on and off the athletic field. Now speaking for the American Football Coaches Association, let me say thanks to all you fans for your enthusiastic support of college football. <laughs> <laughs>